Hi, I'm Angela. Hi, I'm LaShonda, and this is A Black Woman and a White Woman Walk Into a Bar. Yay. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but last time Angela left us with this crazy teaser about like Ben Stein approaching her in like a uh, not friendly way, but like in a really friendly way. We're going to get to more about that. But first, Angela, you have the cocktail this week. Yes, I do, LaShonda. And how are you? How is how are things going with you before we start? Oh, with that? Man, I just have I had a crazy nap right before this. Like woke up and thought it was 2 a.m. It was I ridiculous. Hate I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. But yeah, so we're we um as 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 we discussed on our on our first our last episode, which was our first episode, which is funny. <laughs> our last episode which was the first episode yes um, we talked about the fact that I live in Brooklyn and LaShonda lives in Atlanta and we met here in Brooklyn and then she deserted me to move to Atlanta that's right so so we're we had to find a way to 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 you know see each other so and since we can't hang out at a bar together we decided we would do the virtual drink so we start each we're going to start each episode with a cocktail and last time LaShonda made a a mezcal and um, and pomegranate cocktail, yes. which looks delicious. Yes. And um, this week I'm it's my turn, and I'm not going to make a a mixed drink because I'm too lazy. <laughs> um, not just because I don't want to make the mixed drink, but I'd have to do it in my kitchen, which has really bad lighting. And Lashonda saw all the the odds that I went through getting the lighting for this room. Okay. So. Yes. That would be, yeah, I was too lazy to figure that out this week. So, so, um, but also um, I'm, I, um, I'm sharing with you one of my favorite drinks, which is Amaro, which is a liqueur. And I thought I would just give you a little bit of, um, I want to give you, tell you a little bit about, about that, the background. So, so, um, and, um, and a liqueur, which is different from liquor, because liquor is just all anything that's made that's made that's fermented from a fermented so that could be you know gin or vodka or wine or whatever or beer and a liqueur is um is made from it's 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 made from a distilled liquor but then it has a, it has sugar added to it um so and an interesting story about you know liquor liquor is also called spirit spirit mm -hmm. And so I found this out, I thought this was kind of interesting. The reason that it's called spirits is because when you ferment, when you, after you ferment, you have to distill it, which means you have to separate the alcohol from the water because you want to, you want to take the water out because you want the alcohol. And the distillation process, um, alcohol evaporates at a lower temperature than water does. So you, that's why you have to, you see the, like the smoky, you know, um, smoky comes, uh, whatever, like evaporate, evaporation. It yes. looks like, looks a little like ghosty. Yes. So when people first discovered how to do this, they thought, oh, it's from, it looks like a spirit. It looks like a ghost. So that's how, that's why liquor is called spirits. And that's why they thought it was a gift from God, which I agree from, or a gift from the gods, which I totally agree it is, which always reminds me of that, that old Ben Franklin line, which is, um, the reason that God invented beer is because he loves us and wants us to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that facts? Yeah. Come on. That's uh, supposedly true, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so that crazy Ben Franklin, so. Um, I'll so, be, uh, I mean, who yeah. knew? I guess who that knew? lightning strike is what did it, huh? Yeah, yeah they kind of uh, made him crazy. <laughs> oh, I just dropped something, I don't know what it was. So I'm going to be um, I'm I'm going to be sharing an Amaro with you tonight, but I want to tell you a little bit about what makes a uh, what makes a liqueur. So, a liqueur is a um, it's a spirit, it's alcohol, mm -hmm. which has has sugar added to it. So after the distillation process, then you add sugar in it, and and sugar is the thing that becomes alcohol through the mm -hmm. process of fermentation. So because you're adding more sugar into the alcohol, you're, it's, that's why it has a higher alcohol content. And the reason that's good, other than the fact that it you know, gets you drunk faster, is that it preserves it longer. So you can, 
you can keep a you can keep a, a liqueur for a long much longer than than non um, you know than a non liqueur, and that's good for me because I I like I do drink hard alcohol, but I tend to more drink it when I go to a bar. I don't really drink make mixed drinks at home, mm -hmm. um, but so I drink more wine. But you know I can't I can't really have a I can't finish a bottle of wine by myself. Well, I can, but it wouldn't be a good idea. So, <laughs> so I miss wine. I'm allergic. So oh. is it I'm the tannin? Is it red that you're allergic to or both red and white? Both and champagne and oh. beer. Oh my God. Cause I, I have a hard time if I was allergic to champagne. I don't yeah. drink it that often, but I do love it. But, yeah. Yeah. So unless, um, unless I get, I, I don't have one of those fancy, what are those things called that you, you like, you can put the, the thing in through the cork and then pour the wine, but it doesn't uncork it all the way. So it keeps longer. Oh, it's um, an aerator. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah, I'm not sure what they're, what the different ones or are. De but. Decanter. There's decanters, which you pour the wine into in order to um, allow the wine to breathe. And right. so that it tastes better. And then there's yeah. an aerator, which I think does. This is the thing that not let air Maybe into it. Same thing. I don't so know, you can, whatever. So it keeps longer because- My yeah, wine so knowledge is going away. It's they're leaving. expensive and maybe maybe Santa will bring me one for Christmas, but since I don't have one of those, you know, a bottle of wine really can't go longer than two days, you know? So, um, but with a, with a, with a, um, a liqueur, or a, you can also do this with fortified wines because it's got a higher alcohol, alcohol, I can't even say it, alcohol content. Say that three times fast, Shonda. Alcohol, 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 alcohol. content. <laughs> yeah, so it'll, it'll keep longer. So, mm -hmm. so you can keep a, a bottle of, um, especially if you refrigerated a bottle of liqueur for weeks up to months, depending. But so, um, so I'm sharing with you today and tomorrow, which is, um, it's not, don't, it's not to be confused with the Amaretto. And Amaro is Italian, Italian for bitter. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, so a, a liqueur is, is any, any wine that or a distilled beverage that has, that you've added sugar and flavorings into, but you have the, the sugar is the critical thing because you, you could, you can add like, you've probably seen gin with, um, with additives in it, like herbs and stuff, mm -hmm. but that would not be a liqueur because you didn't add any sugar to it. It's just a, a flavored gin. So, okay. Uh, so an Amaro, this is, I've got two, I brought two and I have to, hold on, let me, let me do a little switching back here. I'm, I have to, I'm going back and forth between two screens here. <clears throat> so we're still learning the, the, the hoops with um, the ropes, the hoops, whatever with the <laughs> Zoom. So this is one that I tried. Um, I got these at, I got these at my local Kings County wine shop, which mm -hmm. thank God they stayed home. They, they were open during the, during the whole coronavirus. Cause I would have, it would have been a hard, hard, much harder time if I didn't have them down the street. I think that liquor stores are essential businesses because they can't have alcoholics taking up emergency room space. Like right. we're talking right. hardcore. Like all I do is drink right. and endanger my health right. people. Um, well, this is a great, uh, this is a plug for my for Kings County. They're really great. And you could, they could Aww. order online and then you could, and then they had it, they have it set up. They have a window set up. So you just go down there and pick it up. So this is the, he recommended this one because I tried the one that I'm drinking tonight. Let me go back here is, um, is it's called um, Marseille. Marseille um, Fort, Fortune and MRO by Fort, Fort House Spirits. I love the label in the bottle. It's really cute. Yeah. And it's, um, yeah, it's, let's see, of course, I forgot to bring my reading glasses. Let's see if I can read this. Mersai Amaro is based on the uh, ancient recipe of, of, um, of four medieval thieves who were caught. I think this is a, I think they made this up. <laughs> so uh, four medieval thieves who were caught stealing from, um, oh my gosh, this is, I'm so old. Stealing from um, Rogue. Oh my God, I need to get my reading glasses. Okay, you need to vamp for a second, LaShonda. 
while I get my reading glasses. What am I gonna do? Vamp, just just vamp. I'll be I tell you I'm gonna read glasses right Dance? Vamp. Vamp? Vamp. Vamp. What does that mean even? Vamp, like like keep, you know, just chat or something, but I'm I guess that was our vamp. That was our vamp. (laughs) What the hell's a vamp? That was a perfect vamp. Okay, so (laughs) so let's start this over. So Mersai Amaro is based on the ancient recipe of four medieval thieves who were caught stealing from plague victims. See, it all it all comes together here in full circle. In Mersai, in exchange for clemency, they revealed their secret concoction with notes of eucalyptus. Plague victims. Plague victims. Yeah, with notes of eucalyptus, cinnamon, rhubarb, and honey. This amaro can be enjoyed neat or on ice. So this is really delicious. That's my favorite. Oh, that's gorgeous too. It's a great bottle. And so, and then um, when I, when I bought that, um, the, the guy at Kings County also, I said, you know, can I get another one to do, I want to do a taste test. So he, he recommended this one, um, which is Amaro, let's see, Maria Almonte. And this one is more syrupy. I'm not as crazy about this one because they have all different flavorings, you know. Is that a giant bottle? It's giant, yeah. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Almost as tall as me. Not quite. So this one, the the Mersai is um, because of the eucalyptus and the rhubarb, it's such it's much less sweet. And it's it's got kind of a medicinal taste, which I re- I really like that. Yeah. So, um, I like that about Fernet too. Yeah, I just like that. Really? You haven't tried Fernet Bron- uh, Blanca? No. Bronca or Blanca? I think you were talking about remember. that. I think you mentioned that. Was that last time you mentioned it or was that another conversation we had? I don't remember which conversation it was, but we, we did talk about Fernet mm-hmm. at some point and Amaro's and this sort of digestive liqueur, um, right. fortified wine right. um, genre of things to imbibe. So thank who are for, we toasting to, Angela? Well, thank you. I wanted to just say one quick thing about digest, digestifs. Thank you for bringing that up because that's what these originally were made for. They were supposed to be after dinner drinks to help settle your digestion. But mm-hmm. I, I drank them, you know, I don't drink them just after dinner. I drink them whenever. So, yeah, so we're toasting. And, um, and so, cheers. cheers, what are you drinking? I am having a honey... Um, honey crisp apple cider, mm. seltzer water, and mm. bourbon. Yum. I love the bourbon. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. So, um, thank you for mentioning the toast, LaShonda, because if you watched last week, you'll know that we toasted John Lewis and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So LaShonda and I were talking and we decided that we liked that. So we're going to toast, do a toast each episode for a historical figure. And I was thinking, it doesn't necessarily have to be historical. You know, we could do somebody that's alive, I guess, but but we're, well, you know, if somebody wonderful comes up that we can think of. But today we're toasting. I'm, in, I'm doing the, I, I, so we decided it was my turn to do the, the historical figure. So we're toasting Susan McKinney Stewart. And I learned about her when I was doing some research about Greenwood Cemetery. And um, Greenwood Cemetery is, it's, it's really wonderful. I've been there a few times. I think, LaShawn, you said you've never been there, right? Cemeteries are not places I go to hang out. Because are you going to say what you said to me? <laughs> Putting you on the spot. I don't remember what I said. said There's probably something crazy, though. You said... <laughs> Black people don't go, like to go to cemeteries or something like something. No, like that. black people don't go to cemeteries and put put up a, a like a blanket like you're about to have snacks and wine on well, some uh, dead person. No, yeah, we don't do that. They do that. People do that at Greenwood Cemetery. Right. Well, it, that has a s- historical. People precedence. aren't me. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, it's it's um, Greenwood Cemetery was the first planned. Um, it was the first green space in, in New York. And so, um, and it's, it's huge. It's, I don't even know how many acres it is, but it's huge. It's very large. And, um, 
So people would buy their plots, but then they would, because it was the only green space existing at that time, they would have, they would go there for the, on the weekends and they would have picnics there. So it was, it was like a public park almost. And it's really beautiful. It's, um, it has a lot of really famous people there. Um, there Leonard Bernstein is buried there. Bas Jamie, John Michel Basquiat is buried there. Um, a lot of people from, you know, historical signif of historical significance. And I was helping a friend with a, a proposal um, for for them. And I, when in the course of my research, I I found the this woman whose name is um, Susan McKinney Stewart. And let me get back here, hold on. Oops. Okay, I screwed up there. We're having technical issues today. So she was, um, she was born in 1847. She died in 1918. She was an American physician and author. She was the third African-American woman to earn a medical degree and the first in New York State. So the first, so the third in, in the country and the first in New York state. And she focused on, her medical career focused on prenatal care and childhood disease. She ran her own practice in Brooklyn and co-founded the Brooklyn Women's Homeopathic Hospital and Dispensary. She sat on the board and practiced medicine at the Brooklyn Home for, the, for Aged Colored People. From 1906, she worked as a college physician in the African Methodist AME. Church, Wilberforce University in Ohio. And um, yeah, she was just really pretty awesome. And she also played the organ. So she played the organ at her local AME church. And she was married twice. Um, the first time, let's see, let me find it. She's married first to a reverend, um, William McKinney from South Carolina. They had two children. Uh -huh. And then after he died, she married a uh, United States Army Buffalo soldier. I love that Buffalo soldier and chaplain. The, this is, is this the coolest name? The, Theophilus Gold Steward. And she moved with him to Montana, Nebraska and Texas. And by wow. 1906, they both found positions in the AME church in Wilberforce University in Ohio, where she worked as a college physician and they had a child together. And then in 1911, she attended the Universal Race Congress in London, where she delivered a paper entitled Col Colored American Women. Uh, so uh, I just thought she I thought, wow, this woman had an amazing life. And what a what a trailblazer. Right. I mean, a trailblazer. And we don't know what. Well, we have some inklings of what yeah. general African-Americans um, were doing, folks without education. So I can only imagine the hurdles that she had to drop, jump in those days. So definitely she deserves this toast. So yeah, so we will we'll now raise our glass, our glasses to Susan McKinney Stewart. Cheers. Well done. I think I took a little bit too big of a swallow. I think it's, it's really hard, excuse me. <laughs> I should have brought some water. It's really hard to be the first, you know? Sorry about that. All the technical difficulties this, this took today. Isn't it so I know last, our first episode was like pretty smooth. Right, and then tonight, like everything's falling. Yeah, but I was saying, I think it's hard to be the first, right? It's always hard to be the first. It's hard to be the first out on the dance floor. It's uh, that takes bravery. I apologize for All these right. awkward views, but this is what we're getting. There we that's, go. That, that's She's good. back. That's good. She's back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing Democrat blue lipstick today. That's, that's awesome. <clears throat> and I'm wearing a t-shirt from a local Atlanta artist. Her name is Product Art Christmas. Addict. What does that say? And it says, my happiness can't be with. Yeah. That's cool. Is that and Frida? That's the likeness of Frida. Frida. Frida, awesome. Yes. Hello, Frida. Thank you at Art Addicts for this fantastic yellow shirt. It goes great with my blue lipstick as my phone slips yet again. <laughs> 
this is I know, you think thing. you think mercury was retrograde but it's not you would think so so this is what i'm going to do instead is we're just going to hold her like this that's go. that's going to be what works best so um okay so i guess we should do the ben stein story before we talk Jesus about Christ. thanksgiving okay so <laughs> the last episode we promised we were talking and Angela dropped this. I want to say it wasn't really a bomb, but it was more like a stink bomb on the conversation <laughs> talking about, oh yeah, Ben Stein hit on me. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, first you were shocked I that I'd never seen. For more than 10 years and she has never once mentioned this to me. First, first we were, you were shocked that I'd never seen um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. No, we're <laughs> following up on that for real for real i know I, that's I the we, we why though i just never saw girl. it i'm sure we got around to it girl okay. well, LaShonda, LaShonda asked me today she's like are you gonna watch um ferris bueller today and i said no why she said because you know you haven't seen it yet i said yeah but this will give you something to bug me about in future episodes <laughs> You're going to keep bugging me about, have you seen Ferris Bueller yet? So I've seen bits and pieces of it. So I know about the, you know, the Ben Stein was the teacher who was droning on and on about the Smoot Hawley Act. Yeah. And, and do you remember he had that TV show, Win Ben Stein's Money? Yes. So, um, so my, my ex-husband and I, my former husband, we're not totally ex yet, but my former husband, he, we used to watch that all the time. He loved that show. He wanted to try out for it. He actually tried out for Jeopardy. That's another funny story. So, <laughs> <laughs> he tried out for Jeopardy, and um, I know so, this guy, and I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to say anything crazy. <laughs> so apparently, when you try out for Jeopardy, you have to answer. I think it's like fifty or one hundred. I know, I think fifty of the two thousand dollar questions. So the the hardest questions in the second, in the second seg section of the show, second half of the show. And um, so he said he was, he was just, he was going humming along and he said he felt like he was getting a lot of them right and he was feeling really good about it. And then he gets to a question and it said, her uh, photograph graced the first cover of, oh, her photograph of the, of the Chrysler building graced the cover of the, of the first uh, Life magazine. And he's, he's a former professional photographer. So he immediately went, oh, I got this. And he said, um, it's um, oh my God! I just blank. I'm just totally ruining this because I blank on what it's called, what her name is. Um, it's okay. <laughs> so, no, he said it was um. He said, oh, it's Dorothea Lange. And then so then he then he answers that question, and then he's like, no, it wasn't Dorothea Lange. And he said he just could not let go of that. He kept he kept trying to remember who it was. And, Does he um, wake up? Late nights thinking about this, I wonder. Probably. Probably. Well, he, he did when I was married to him because, because when he told me that story and it's, and this is the woman, this is the person who I can't, I can't remember her name. Um, I can't believe I can't remember her name, but let's see. So um, it's, um, what was her name? Anyway, so he couldn't let it go. So he, he just kind of tanked after that. I'm going to have to look this up because it's going to drive me crazy. So Please um, look it up. Yeah, because yeah, and then I'll tell you about Ben Stein. <sighs> promises, oh. promises, man. Come on. Yeah. Um, let's see, photographer. I can't believe I can't remember this because I, I I bugged him about. It. I used this to to get him pissed off for years. Photographer. Um, um, oh, I just I almost had it. I had it. Um, photographer. Chrysler Building. So we're, we're giving you a we're giving you a lesson in um, in how to do a Google search. <laughs> that is actually not what's happening. What's happening is, is this is this is what happens in my conversations with Angela. This is what we do. Yeah. There's a thousand stories that she's never told me in her entire life, and even though I've only been a part of it for a decade plus stories that I haven't heard yet. And so sometimes those stories include additional factoids 
that are pertinent to the conversation. Because the next time she says, I can't remember that person's name, I store it way back there in the back of my brain. And I say, it's so-and-so. And And then she'll be like, I don't know, I need to check that. (laughs) I did remember that it was a three, it was a three name name and it's it's Margaret Burke White, Margaret Burke White. So that's that's whose photograph was on the first cover of Life Magazine. So um, what I would do is I would, whenever we had a family gathering, I would say to our nieces and nephews, I would say, I would say, go up to your uncle Hal, I'd whisper at them, go up to your uncle Hal and ask them, ask him what, what, how he feels about the photography of Margaret Burke White. (laughs) And they would do it and he would just, he would look over at me. I couldn't let that go. That was too funny. (laughs) Okay, Angela. So Ben Stein, so. Tell us. So, yeah, I've never seen. I've I've never seen um, Ferris Bueller, but I watched Ben Stein's Money, and um, I used to work for nonprofits. That's what I did for twenty five years. In my former life, I was a CFO for nonprofits. So I was working for this one nonprofit, and we had a fundraiser at Tavern on the Green, and the staff all got the room set up, and then we went upstairs. We had, we had rooms and upstairs so we could change. So I change into my fancy duds and I walk to the elevator and I look and standing at the elevator is Ben Stein. I'm like, oh my God, it's Ben Stein. So I look at him, he looks at me and I hope he doesn't sue me for this. He was actually a gentleman, he didn't do anything bad. <laughs> so if, if you're married, Ben Stein, you didn't you know, tell your wife that you're, you were fine. So he, he kind of, but he looks me up and down and he says, he says, oh my, <laughs> he said, uh, we have, we must have a special occasion tonight. And I said, I said, yeah, I'm, uh, we have a fundraiser. I'm working for a nonprofit. And he asked me about the fun, what, who it was for, what organization it was for. I told him, he said, good cause, good cause. And then the elevator door opens and then we walk in and, and then I, and I invited him to, to come to the fundraiser and he, he declined, but, but he was, yeah, he definitely was, um, you know, women, we can tell these things when, when men are, you know, when they're, when they're appreciative of our appearance, I'll just say. So I told, well, I told, I told Hal about it and he said, damn, now I really want to go on that show. So when they, when they have the little, you know, when you chat with the host, he said, I can, I can say, you know, I can say that you, you know, tried to pick up on my wife. So. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's so much worse like at least not even at least you know we we I think that I think that the built-in expectation is for men not to be rapey and weird and I'm glad that that's not what that experience was for you yeah no he was he was a gentleman but he was definitely very complimentary in a way that you know that men are right we know what that is right yes So. so yeah so so yeah I kind of you know, I, I like to share that story by saying that Ben Stein hit on me, but it really was very, yeah, he was very gentlemanly. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's good. That's and maybe good. someday I'll actually watch Ferris Bueller's Day. <laughs> but then I won't be able to ask, <laughs> but then I won't be able to say that I've never seen it. So, because I get a better reaction of that than saying I've seen, you know, who cares if I've seen it? It's, it's bloody never... ridiculous that you're avoiding it to get a reaction out of anyone. It's the joy of a film. Well, I'm I'm not. That's not my real reason. You made for... me watch Babette's Feast like fifty times. Oh, that's a good movie. <laughs> but we've also we got, we've also watched um, you know The Breakfast Club. So I love that. It's not that I'm opposed to. <sighs> um, but when you said about have, me having stories, it just reminded me of our friend Rick. So we have a yes. friend, Rick Manello, and um, he was he was an awesome guy. He was a screenwriter, and he was the man who directed the two Beastie Boys videos, Fight for Your Right to Party and No Sleep Till Brooklyn. And yeah. so one day he's, he has he has story upon story, right? But one day he's in my kitchen, he used to hang out in my kitchen a lot. And- We um, all did. <laughs> Angela's kitchen. <laughs> and he so he knows that I love Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash is one of my favorites. And he he says, 
I said something about Neil Young and he said, um, I, I don't like Neil Young, which generally gets, um, you know, people don't understand why I don't like Neil Young, but he said, Rick said, you know, Johnny Cash didn't like Neil Young either. I said, how do you know that? And he said, because when we were, when we were filming, when we were doing the American recordings with Johnny Cash, I said, wait a minute, you, you were there. <laughs> he was friends with Rick Rubin, right? Who did American recordings. I said, you were there with Johnny Cash? And he said, yeah. And he said, yeah, actually, June Carter Cash sang her a new song to me. And I said, wait a minute, you were there, you, you were there in the room with Johnny Cash and you met June Carter Cash. And he said, yeah. And I said, and you've never told me? I mean, you know, I love that man. You've never told me that you met Johnny Cash. So, yeah. Yeah, he was like a wellspring of crazy stories. Yeah. And See, the one, that from, of my, that, the one that's most memorable to me that um, that he told was about the going back to Cali mm -hmm. video from uh, the LL Cool J song. Right. He was like, okay, so you know in the video, right? Where he says, her bikini small, heels tall. She said she liked the ocean. Yeah. He was like, well, I told them to do the ocean thing. <laughs> It's like, you can't just do nothing after you did the other things. You got to do something with your hands. Right. I was like, oh my God. I love, <laughs> you know, I love this. I can I just love, see it though, like him talking to like LL Cool J. <laughs> I love the Beastie Boys videos and that's what everybody remembers him for. But I, but I, my favorite video of his is the LL Cool J, back to Cali because. It's gorgeous, right? Who does a rap video in black and white other than Rick That Nick? part. You know, I mean. And I said to him the first time I saw it, I said, "What are? Where'd you get all those shots of he had, you know, all the shots of Hollywood and Los Angeles?" And he said, "Postcards." <laughs> <laughs> he was funny. I think we need to do a toast to Rick Manello. Cheers to Rick Manello. Rick, Rick, Rick. Yeah, he was a great friend and great guy. Who did not drink much? He never drank. No. He had his he drank his seltzer. Yeah, cranberry and seltzer. That was his yeah. thing. No, he didn't drink, but he was a cool guy. Here's another little little tidbit of trivia for those who don't know this. So Rick was helping me work on a pro a writing project I was doing and and I was trying to come up with some ideas and he said, What what you do is you take you take things that I lost you. Are you still there, LaShonda? I am still here. Sorry, my battery said, light went off. I was trying to come up with uh, some um, an idea, and he said, "He said, well, what you do is you take." It was a screenplay, and he said, "You take you take an you take two ideas and you put them together." And I said, "But isn't that stealing?" He said, "All of art is stealing," and he said, "The what the thing is is that you you put them together those two things in a way that's nobody nobody's ever seen before, and that's what art is." And I said, "Wow." So I said, what were your themes for the for for fight for your right to party? And he said, the Keystone Cops and Breakfast at Tiffany's. I said, Breakfast at Tiffany's. And he said, the party scene from Breakfast, Breakfast at Tiffany's, where they're all in this her teeny tiny apartment and they had to go out on the fire escape to get and go in another window because there were so many people and it was such a tiny apartment. So that was that was what the yeah, that's how they came that's up. That's interesting. With ideas for, yeah. Right, right, right. And the parents in the video are Rick's parents. <laughs> and at the very end, when you then somebody puts a pie in his, this, the parents come in and, and somebody puts the pie in his mom's face. He said that he, he had to put the pie in his mom's face because nobody else would do it. They said, your mom's too nice. I can't put a pie in your mom's face. Yeah. So, so Rick had to do it. So they were good sports that they, they agreed to do that. Look at Rick showing up on our, yeah. on our little Zoom cast thingy, Diggy. Right. He has a way of doing that, yeah. He does have a way of doing that. And I'm not mad at him. Like, yeah, you know? We it's it's always good to have the spirit of our friends sort of pop up on us. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think know. he's around a lot, actually. Yeah. I feel him around a lot, so. Yeah, I remember him telling me the story about, and then I'll, we'll stop talking about Rick for a bit, but 
um, the after the Beastie Boys videos came out, and he said he was in he was. I think he was, his parents were living in Brooklyn at that point. Um, and he was upstairs in his bedroom on, in the, the second floor. And his mom was outside sweeping the front stoop, which is what people in Brooklyn do. And he heard these, he heard these guys talking, these kids talking across the street. And he, he, looked, he looked out his window and he said, there's this group of kids and they're all like pointing at his mom. And he got a little nervous. He thought maybe they were up to no good. So he was keeping an eye out. And then one of the kids walked across the street and says to his mom, you look like the lady that's in the Beastie Boys video. And she said, I am. And she said, and that was my son who did, did the video. And the kid looked around looked back at his friends. And he's like, I told you that was her. And so they all went across the street and they were talking to her about the video and how much they liked the video. And uh, That is so sweet. But yeah, you just hear her say, that was my, my son did that video. <sighs> He's a good guy. Yeah. Those, how many families actually that would have their kids hang out together mm -hmm. and go to the same schools still live in Brooklyn, except for like a handful of neighborhoods. It's so interesting. It just doesn't feel like that place anymore. Well, that's one of the things that I find really interesting about Brooklyn because where I grew up, people moved around a lot and I moved around a lot. So it's just interesting to me living in a neighborhood where people have like, you know, their grandparents lived here kind of thing. You know, it's very different for me. Yeah. So. Yeah. So speaking of families, so what are you gonna do for Thanksgiving, LaShonda? Girl, I'm, I'm going to so I have a cousin that lives about an hour and change north of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So since she invited me, I'm going to go up there. I know, you know, pretty much that she doesn't, she's not someone who's like going to clubs and bars and hanging out because she's got a family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she has a, a very young son or fairly young son um, and her husband and they're really, really nice people. And since they've been pretty much quarantining together. Um, I'm going to head up there and I'm going to have an overnight with her and her. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to stay over because she and I stay up and talk crazy all night. Like this is just like the last time I went over there, we were up until like three in the morning, giggling and talking about stuff. Nice. At the time I was talking about making hair stuff and I've been making hair stuff. So I'm going to bring her some of the things that I've made, which will be fun. So you have anything special on the menu? Um, I think that we're focused actually on the healthier things because she's not someone who's like really into, you know, fatty meats and lots of meat in general. So I'm going to be making a garlicky kale and mustard green, mm. um, the new fashioned way, like where you don't cook it for an hour. Mm. That. <laughs> nice. I'm going to literally saute that mess, put it in a bowl and take it. And then you'll heat it up and it'll be a little bit more cooked Mm -hmm. but not too cooked. Like I, I think that green, you need to maintain some of the, some of the um, actual life in the greens. And since it's, since it's her, I know that that's how she cooks her greens when she makes greens, unless they're like meant to be soul food greens, which is a whole other type of green, which doesn't mean that it's devoid, devoid of nutrients, but it is cooked for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So it's not quite the same as eating something that's sauteed, you know. Um, so yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna just make some greens and I'm gonna drive myself up there and hang out with her and spend the night and we'll have many toasts, I'm sure, and many giggles, I'm sure. We'll probably call my sister at one point because she and my sister went to the same high school. And um, we'll probably call my sister to you know, poke at her a little bit. <laughs> so I'll take some tomorrow. Well, what are you doing? What's what is some tomorrow? What are people doing? Um, I'm not doing anything. I I've been talking to a few people about yeah. The thing that this 
So I, just to give folks a little bit of background on, on us. So when, um, when, when my husband and ex-husband and I first split up, I had, um, are you coming back on the screen there, LaShonda? I'm trying. There we go, okay. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the wonkiest. I know, it is wonky, that's okay. Yeah. It's, it's good not to be too, we don't wanna to look too professional. <laughs> I'll take all the fun out of it. Girl. So uh, yeah, I used to have, I used to do, I used to do holidays here, you know, back, back in the day. Um, I used to do Christmas and Thanksgiving and, and that was a big, that, you know, everybody, everybody knew about it. So I would have like in my tiny apartment, you can see the size of the living room. I would have like 20 people, 25 people. Um, but then um, I got poor and my nephew needed a place to live. So he lived in my living room for uh, like seven years. And then I, he finally, we finally went, you know, he moved out in February, no, March. He moved out two days before the shut the shutdown, the curfew here, or the shutdown. Oh. So, so I was like, I'm, I've got my living room back. I'm so excited. I can have. I was planning on having a birthday party here for myself, and and you know, and then and then of course, you know, nothing. So, so that's kind of sad. But I think what I'm going to do because I just decided that you know we're we're spiking here again in New York, and I just I I just feel like you know if it, you know, it's one thing if, if it's like, if it feels like this is going to go on forever, then, then you have to make adjustments, you know, like how, what you, do you have to really, I mean, you do this anyway, but you like assess your, your risk tolerance level. If this, yeah. but, but since they, they seem to be pretty hopeful about these vaccines coming up that we might be able to get this somewhat under control by the spring mm -hmm. or summer. I feel like, you know, we can, I can hang on for that much longer. So I'll just, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to do anything this holiday for any of the holidays and just, you know, do my best to, you know, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going, I'm not going to have anybody over. And I have a few friends who are, who are not having anybody over, but I'm going to do like an open zoom thing. So I, I said, I told my, the, a few people and I'll send you the link of two. Is that I'm just going to leave Zoom open all day, but we're not going to, but I said, I don't want anybody to feel obligated. Like you have to sit in front of your computer and talk. Just, it'll be just like having your, your, your aunt and uncle in the living room, you know, so we can walk That's by and smart. wave the camera just so we don't feel like we're all by ourselves, you know? Yeah. But it's, yeah, That's it's just, it's, it's just weird. I mean, this whole time is weird. Every, everything just feels so strange, but. But I, I normally like wouldn't do anything I've considered seriously. Like I have two of my pod are traveling, so we can't rejoin each other until two weeks after they've come back right. with, and then we'll, you know, we'll see. Um, they'll probably test on day 10 to get results on day 14. And I'll probably do the same when they come back. And then mm -hmm. I have one other pod member who, didn't contact me early on. And so we're just sort of like, I was, I felt kind of bad, but you know, I was, my cousin actually asked me to come up. She was like, you know, we've been extreme. We've been at home all the time. We haven't had guests, you know, you'll be the first guest that we have. So we need to know that, you know, what's your life like, like what, you know, we did a whole conversation about what do you do? What do you not do? Do you believe in masks? You know, um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like having the safe sex conversations, you know? Right. It's just, right. And there's, you know, which is weird and it, and it feels, but it's even more dangerous. It feels like, right. Well, cause there, there's, a, there's a certain level of like, of like shame around it. I think almost like, you know, like you feel there's... like, but we need to get back. We need to get past that. But there should be shame if you're like packing yourself into bars and nightclubs. I'm right. sorry, but at this point, you know, we've been in a global pandemic for a while. We know that you're tired of um, quarantining and this sort of thing. But at the same time, do you really want to like kill your friends and family? Oh, yeah. I mean... I was so tired of quarantining that I decided that I was going to do what I wanted to do and then pass this on to five people who have vulnerabilities that I didn't know about. 
Does yeah. that seem fair? No, it doesn't. Yeah. It's not. Um, so that's why I'm literally only going to do this one thing and I'm going to spend the night up there and then I'm going to drive myself home and I got to figure out who's going to feed Gustavo. Speaking of home. <laughs> yeah, well, that was you, hear, you see how that, that, that goes? He was I mentioned his name and he's like, yes, <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. He's fun. like, would you please stop talking about me and pet my tummy? He's like, I I'm sick of this conversation. I need rubs. Come here, Bubba. This is, this is why I keep doing this. You mm -hmm. saw me do this earlier when we were talking. Mm -hmm. It's me petting Gustavo. So, because before the meow comes the Remember right Kitty? under my chair. Remember Kitty? I do her. It is eh. Ah. Eh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> she was so funny. Her meow. Eh. But, but we knew what she wanted. No. All the time. On the food, yeah. So yeah, it's it's just it's really hard. I mean, and, and I know people are getting tired of this, but but you know, we gotta just hang on a little bit longer because it's just I know this is boring and I'm, I'm bored with it myself, but we just got to, you know, I mean, I'm really, it makes me really nervous when I look at the, because the, you know, the thing that's scary, you know, and I talked to my relatives at the very beginning when this was all, you know, when, when um, New York was, was ground zero for this and my relatives live in Minnesota and South Dakota and Iowa. And I was like, you know, you guys need to be really careful. And it's not like they didn't take it seriously, but they didn't, they didn't take it all that, you know, there was kind of like a cavalier, you know, like that's not going to get from New York to us. And now South Dakota is the, has the highest death rate of any place in the, in the world, not in the country, in the world. Jesus it's Christ. It's got the highest death rate per capita from COVID. And there's not that many people there. No, because they've got, the, and, and this is what I was, I was bitching about this at the beginning is the meat processing plants because they weren't doing any they weren't using any safety precautions in the you know in the meat processing plants they were doing some but their basic measures they weren't taking extraordinary measure, measures and you know people that work in meat processing plants tend to be poor they tend to be um, undocumented workers a lot of the time and and the reason I mentioned that is because they tend to live really um because they send all their money back to whatever country they're from and so, live in so cluster. Live, yeah exactly so there's a bunch of them crammed you know because growing up in california working in food service you know i these these guys that would come from mexico and and um south america to work and and they were they were so frugal because they they didn't spend they sent all their money back because they were hoping to you know just for their families and they were hoping to raise money to start a business like to buy a cab medallion or or something so they live very frugally and they a bunch of them jammed you know crammed into small apartments so all of the conditions that spread covid and and then people are surprised that it's getting out into the community but they don't want to have to wear their mask because it's their right not to wear a mask i'm like it's not your right to you know kill, kill all these people so, I mean, I feel, I feel badly and, and I know human, like, you know, I, I see, I see that here in my neighborhood, people are starting to, to get a little lax with it. And that's what makes me nervous. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not a hundred percent, you know, but as careful as I would like to be, as I should be, but, but I'm just trying to stay in as much as possible. And so, so yeah, so it's going to be a very, um, quiet Thanksgiving for me, but, but, you know, we can do this for one more year, you know? Yeah. I, I actually am thinking about not, sorry. Okay. <laughs> it happens. I'm not trying to talk well, you out of, because it sounds like you guys are really being really careful about it. So. Yeah. But like, there's also a part of me that's like, maybe I shouldn't do this. Because, like, we live separately. Like, it's not like I've seen you recently. I think, you know, I think we should create a holiday 
um, for the for whenever this is we you know this is starting to be over. We got a handle on it. We should create a holiday and do it. You know, and that should be our that should be the thing that we look forward to. Maybe we can make it on my birthday. <laughs> make it all about me, but but no, yeah. I mean I think you know we need something to look forward to. But I just feel like this year is kind of bust anyway. This is just such a sucky year. <laughs> let's just let's just you know suck it up for another. Twenty twenty has been like the trashest. Of Dude, all I can't believe it's been almost. No, a we've year. said that a lot about a lot of years. But, but this like, uh, this is it. This 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 is it. like this all is the cake taking. Yeah, I mean, and and I can't believe it's I it's doing this thing with my teeth. It's weird. Sorry, I can't believe it's almost. It's going to be a year soon. That's crazy. I mean, I remember I, cause I told, I told my nephew on January 1st, I said, I'm, I'm booting you out, dude. And I love you, but you know, I, I need my apartment back and it worked out fine. Cause he and his, his girlfriend now fiance, who's, she's a lovely person. I adore her. So they were talking about moving in together. So the timing was right. And then, but they had trouble, you know, they found a place, but then they were trying to get the financing together. Mm -hmm. And then so I told him, I told him January 1st, and I said, I'm giving you until March 31st. Figured that was, that's a good amount of time. So they found this place at the, I think the end of February, and, they were, and then they were trying to get the financing together. And they got the financing together and the, 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 the landlord or super said, you guys can move in um, on March 15th. And that was two days before, before the shutdown here in New York. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, thank God, because I love my nephew. He's wonderful. But that would have been insane. He's going to be a guest. He's going to be our first guest on this show, I think. But, Is he? Um, yeah. That would be cool. But um, but yeah, I was like, if we would have been jammed in here for eight months, a year, however long this is going to end up being, I think I would have. I would have. I don't. I think both of us would have like <laughs> jumped out the second floor window and that was not enough to kill you so i just would have broken my leg and then right. i had to go to the nursery room and gotten covid so and taking up hospital beds that are valuable and needed right. and required for sicker people right. that are involuntarily right. sick but it's it's really scary because you know the the hospitals are trying to fill up again and i want to start i know it's kind of obnoxious but i want to start the the tradition of cheering for the for the hospital workers. I, I saw that. an interesting meme about this very fact. They're like, we don't need you to come outside and cheer. Wear, I think wear your mask. I'm on my roof, you know. I feel bad because I feel like now is when they really need it. Need it. I mean, these right. guys must be exhausted. They must be exhausted. I want I want to figure. Okay, let's ask let's ask our our viewers to come up with ways that we can show our appreciation. Other than wearing a mask and social distancing. Yeah, other than that, yeah. That's that's okay. the most important thing. But other than that, what are ways that we can show our appreciation? Because these guys are, they're the unsung heroes, man. I don't know how they do it. I really don't. I mean, I wouldn't have the emotional wherewithal to do, to deal with it. Yeah. Them. No, it's a lot. And it's crazy. It's a lot. Angel, so, what do we, so what's next? Okay. What's next for us? We're going to. Just looking at the clock. It's time we'll to wrap catch up. up. So yeah, so next week we can share what we what we did after Thanksgiving. What we yeah, I'm not and, sure. Uh, so you it's your turn for the cocktail and and the toast, or we might switch yeah. that up a little bit. But I'm gonna but, I'm, I'll find someone to toast. Okay, there's so many. Like I, it's no. literally close your eyes and pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And, yeah. and thank and and thanks thank you for watching us again and I hope you like the show and if there are any things that you if any comments please make them if they're nice <laughs> we don't need mean comments right now unless Listen. they're unless they're you know helpful suggestions but but yeah people are going to people because that's what people do <laughs> that's but what people do. I think that we know that that our that our particular set is a kind group yeah. and they'll probably say something like hey you need something to mount your phone and i do have something to mount my phone onto mm -hmm. 
unfortunately the stickiness wore off and so I did the whole thing where you run it under hot water and then I did the whole thing where you literally go and buy restickable dots for mounting right. and re and added those to my my mounting device and so precariously perched and dropped phone three or four times you look awesome today I might I have to say I love your hair you look awesome Thank you. This is the, hey, it's time to wash your hair. Do something with it so that that's less obvious. <laughs> I colored my hair yesterday. Really? I got rid of the gray, yeah. yeah. I don't, it's not so much that I mind the gray, but I, oh, I, like sorry. Head, I like my hair to be, part of the reason that I like coloring my hair is it, it gives it more texture. My hair is really kind mm -hmm. of flat without it. And I like, I like, but I love this. I love these highlights. I didn't do these highlights. It's just, this is, these are like, you know, cool. I don't know why, where this came from. It's, it's, it's kind of gray when I, you know, when I don't color it, but it's not like totally gray. So it's weird because I didn't put these highlights in, but, but I'm yeah. thinking about maybe I should put some blue in again. Cause I had for a long time, for those of you who don't know me, I had blue, I had blue streaks in my hair, but. I might do that again, but I got bored with it. So, yeah. But anyway, so, all right, my friend. Well, it was good. It was good having a beverage with you. Let's do a let's do a last little toast. So again, to to Susan uh, McKinney Stewart, to Rick Manello, and to the the um, to our workers who are manning the hospitals and and all that, and all the people that are you know dealing with that stuff. I mean, the people. Dealing not to be morbid, but the people dealing with the dead bodies and, you know, you know, all and that. And also stuff. people yes. who are trying to live with whatever side effects that they have from right. rec semi-recovering or recovering, right. you know. Like and I said, I have a friend who's a COVID nurse and I have another friend who is an epidemiologist and they are going through it. They're going through it. And here's to Georgia and Pennsylvania and Arizona <laughs> going and Nevada and Michigan and who else was that it was was did Wisconsin flip this year but yeah but definitely I don't remember I, I stopped person. looking because I was like you know what let's just see if we if there's a coup yeah. I, I'm just I'm waiting Stacey Abrams here's a Stacey Abrams yeah, totally. definitely here's the yeah. Stacey Abrams and yeah. the New Georgia Project yeah and the Fair Fight Organization and let's remember that this is just the beginning. This doesn't mean we're off the hook. We still have a lot of work to do. Oh, we absolutely do. A lot of people are, yeah, yes, yeah. work, work. There will be so, work. You will be will writing be letters. Work. We will be doing this yeah. the way that democracy is supposed to be, not where mm -hmm. we sit back on our laurels and wait and see what people do and then point and be mad. That's the problem with democracy is that we think that it, you know, We've been so spoiled in this country, at least certain segments of, of the population have been spoiled. And we think that we, you know, it's a smooth running machine, but we've seen through this last, this last uh, administration that that's not the case, that if we don't keep constant vigilance, you know, people can take advantage and yeah. And yeah. indeed, it'll be interesting to, to think about this in the future, but how we look back upon this, this period, but. But I feel I feel I hope good they about tell it. the truth. I because feel good about it. Because history books are notorious. Yeah. Notorious. Well, that's another thing that we got to pay attention to because you know, I mean, one of the things that we won't, well, we don't want to get off on this tangent. We've talked about this for another hour. But one of the things that I realized is, and that I never realized before, is that how little I learned. And I grew up in a in California in the '70s, where you had a really excellent educational system. And I but there's how, people that they don't tell you about. Yeah, I didn't learn about slavery. I didn't learn about what we did to the Native Americans. I didn't learn about that stuff. No, you know, it, was, it was mentioned. It was like an aside, but I don't remember. You know, but otherwise, you know. everyone got along and they had Thanksgiving yeah. dinner. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we have lots of work to do, but I feel like at least there's hope now that there that was not there before. So. So here's to you, my darling friend. Here's to you, my darling friend. And I'll see What's you your after. name? Uh, my name is Angela. And my name is LaShonda. And we're a, a black woman and a white woman walking into a bar. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>
All right, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching. We love you. Bye.